Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, please write to me at walkwithtak at gmail.com if you have any question regarding to this video or any other video that I've posted in the past. If you have any video that you would like me to make, uh, please let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And when it comes to food, we all like to eat food that are familiar to us. But at the same time, it has enough variations to make it interesting. And that is exactly uh, what we need to do in home cooking. is to cook something that we really love and enjoy. But at the same time, uh, is to be able to introduce enough variations uh, to make it interesting and delightful. And this dish is a good way to illustrate my point. It is a chow mein. A chow mein that where the noodles has been pan fried is one of our favorite dishes of all time. And because of this, uh, we probably can eat it uh, several times a week. But at the same time, uh, we would like to have enough variations to make the dish interesting. And this is where template-based cooking of the fast cooking system really comes into play. A pan fried noodle chow mein originated from southern part of China. Now, there are many ways to cook pan fried noodles. Uh, in the uh, authentic way is that egg noodles first is being boiled, and then it is then pan fried. Now, in our case, uh, we do not have egg noodles, the Cantonese style, available to us. So I have been working on this template and trying to figure out how can I create something similar, uh, but without using egg noodles. Because pasta noodles is always available to me. And this is a good example of how I figured out use pasta noodles to create this pan fry chow mein. And the reason that this is within my reach is because of the fast cooking system, which stands for flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking. And as the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention, since we both like and enjoy the pan fried chow mein, which is normally with the Cantonese egg noodles. So we are looking for a substitution. The best way is to find something that is readily available and that is spaghetti pasta noodles. And this is where advanced prepping of the fast cooking system play a significant role. It all started when I started to prep pasta noodles in advance for using in spaghetti meals as well as use in the lo mein. And since I already have the pasta noodles all prepped and stored in the refrigerator, one day I decided why not I give it a try and just pre fry it to see how it's going to turn out. At the first time, it did not turn out too well. The noodles start to stick and burn to the bottom surface of the wok. And then I realized that in order to avoid it from uh, being stuck and burned, uh, the best thing is that to let the noodle to sit in the refrigerator for 48 hours or longer. This will cause the noodles to dry out. And the end result is that it will not stick. And this is exactly the same type of situation when I make fried rice, I have to let the rice to sit in the refrigerator to dry out before using it in making fried rice. So after some additional experimentation, I start to figure out the template. I start to realize that uh, I can't prep the spaghetti pasta noodles in advance, and then I just let them sit in the refrigerator for about 48 hours or longer. Then when I fry it, make sure that I season the wok properly. And when I add the noodles to the wok, I start out with the burner set at high. But it's essential for me to turn the heat of the burner to low or medium low. And this will brown the noodles slowly without getting them burned. And this also creates a texture between the crispy aspect as well as the soft aspect of the noodles and provided the greatest culinary experience. Okay, now I have a template which I can use it from now on. Once I have the template, the possibilities are almost limitless. As I continue to progress on my fast cooking system, I realize that uh, actually uh, there are multiple templates, and quite often in many dishes, we combine different templates together. This dish is a good example, which I combine the pan fried chow mein template uh, together with a stir fry beef template. The reason that template is so much better than recipes, because in the case of template, you try to figure out 
what is the best way to cook certain food ingredients to achieve the texture as well as the doneness that you want. And beef is one of those uh, ingredients that require experimentation to figure out how to create the tenderness that you want. Now, beef tend to be more complicated compared to other types of food ingredients because beef come in different cuts and they respond differently during the stir-frying process. But if I can figure out the general principle, maybe I can apply it to all cuts in the same way. And the method that I figured out how to stir-fry beef is demonstrated in this particular dish. Basically, a beef from my experimentation, a best is cooked in two steps. And a lot of this, which people have written about it, and I just draw from the experience and incorporate it into my home cooking. And the best way to cook beef is that the first step is to sear the beef in high heat. And the first step is extremely fast. But the next step is to cook the beef slowly uh, under low heat. It is the ability to control these two different temperature precisely is how you're going to get the best texture and doneness uh, to the way how you will like it. According to beef with cornstarch turned out to be really important because it absorbs as much moisture as possible. When the beef is dry, uh, it will not reduce the temperature of the hot oil and therefore this will allow the beef to be sealed rapidly. And this usually takes only about 30 to 60 seconds, particularly the beef has been cut into thin slices. At this point, I want the beef cooked to medium to medium rare. In order to get a tender texture that we are looking for uh, when a beef that is well cooked, is to lower the temperature. And the best way to lower the temperature is to add other food ingredients because once you add those food ingredients, uh, the temperature will drop immediately. From my experimentation, I discovered the best way to reduce this temperature is to add vegetables. And so for this dish, I add the vegetable of the combination of uh, mushroom, zucchini, and red cabbage. Uh, the reason to, for choosing these vegetables is because they all can be cooked very quickly. So by the time when the beef is cooked to the texture that I want, uh, this vegetable will also be done. So after I uh, figured out the basic principle of this method, I start to try it in different kinds of beef. Now there may be some variations, but all cuts of beef respond very similar to this method uh, to create a tender texture. This method turned out to work also very well in other types of red meat, such as lamb and venison. Whereas pork and chicken uh, react very differently, and this approach do not work very well with them in the same way as they work well with red meat. So what I have shown you here is that I have worked out a template for stir-fried beef as well as other red meat. And this is based on the basic concept of the fast cooking system in developing templates. But it is important to remember the template only works uh, with flavor chasing because flavor chasing is an approach of create the texture of the food that you enjoy, not just the taste itself. So in summary, the basic template in cooking beef or red meats divided into two steps. The first step is to uh, sear the meat at high temperature, and usually that happens in very short amount of time. And the second part of this template is that to cook the meat slowly, uh, this is by lower the cooking temperature. And it turned out to be the best way to lower the cooking temperature is to add vegetable ingredients to the wok because that will drop the temperature immediately. Now, I actually have a third template that I involve in cooking this dish. The third template is to create a sauce. And this is a gravy-like sauce that will allow one to use the sauce to coat the noodles and to create better flavor. And you can consider this also as a template. And the reason that it is a template is because the same approach in creating the sauce can be utilized in almost any dishes whether it is going to go over noodles, go over rice, or go over any other type of food ingredients that you would like. At the time when Thanksgiving comes, I use the same approach uh, to create a gravy for Thanksgiving turkey. 
Once you're familiar with this template, you can create almost any sauce that you want. And the basic template is use 8, a cornstarch water suspension. I usually use one part of cornstarch to two parts of water. As shown in the early part of this video, uh, initially the gravy may be a bit too thick, but I can easily thin it out by adding hot water to the wok. And using this approach, I'm able to adjust the consistency of the gravy to the thickness that I want. So as you can see here, this entire dish is constructed by the different aspects of the fast cooking system. With stir frying, I'm able to cook it very rapidly. With advanced prepping, I will have all the ingredients available for me to use. And with template-based cooking, I have worked out the basic template. Ultimately, the flavor of the dish plays the most critical role. And this is where flavor chasing come in. You constantly modify different steps and to create the flavor that you are looking for. And so basically, the fast cooking system is provide you with the basic tools to cook the food that you're going to love and enjoy. I post a video each day to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine of using my fast cooking system to create the food that you love and enjoy. If you'd like to learn as well as to adopt my fast cooking system, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So keep on cooking and I will see you tomorrow.